I think we have here a very nice uh, session with several trials. Uh, I would say that the first two trials are French trials that uh, look at remote monitoring in patients with uh, ICD. And I think those are quite uh, relevant. They represent a relatively substantial uh, population of, uh, of patients with ICD. And they basically show the safety of doing remote monitoring in these patients, which may actually have a significant impact in terms of costs and in terms of the way these uh, patients are managed there. Evatel compared two groups of patients with ICDs. One had conventional office visits every three months, while patients in the other group had remote devices followed up every three months. The result demonstrated in the 1,500 patients, no difference in terms of clinical events between the two groups, and the non anfoyete hypothesis, which was the primary hypothesis of the protocol was validated in intent to treat analysis. A remote follow-up of the device is safe and may be proposed today as an alternative to in-office follow-up. We need to have more information about the cut effectiveness of the technique and its sub-analysis of the Evatel trial still pending. Credo Kyoto has the largest ever study population of triple vessel disease with syntax score assessment. The current analysis consists of 2,981 patients with triple vessel disease, 1,825 treated by PCI and 1,156 by CABG. PCI was significantly associated with higher risk for a composite of M uh, this MI stroke up to three years. And furthermore, a protective effect of CABG uh, for myocardial infarction was particularly remarkable. And uh, regarding the stratified analysis by the syntax score, uh, the cumulative incidence of primary outcome measure was not different between the PCI and CABG in patients with low or intermediate syntax score, while it is markedly higher in patients with high syntax score after PCI compared with CABG. The implication of this is that basically in patients with severe three-vessel disease and patients uh, who have a high syntax score, which we know also are the patients who have worse results with, uh, with surgery, most likely there, these patients, uh, uh, the surgical treatment uh, probably will be better. Although uh, what they also showed is that if you have patients uh, with uh, lower scores, these patients may benefit of both, either PCI or uh, cabbage, although the cabbage results were slightly better even in the lower score of uh, syntax. The European Society of Cardiology has decided to organize a public event in Paris as we regularly do for our annual meeting because we believe that it is extremely important to provide proper advices to the general population. By proper advices I mean good lifestyle measures. We have four steps in this public event. The first one is to provide good lifestyle measures in terms of stress gestion and how to relax. The second step is to emphasize the importance of having physical activity regularly. The third step is to provide advices on how to have a, a good nutrition measures and in particular to eat vegetables regularly. And the fourth step is more medical. We have experts where people can check their blood pressure, their plasma cholesterol level, and their glycemia, and thereafter discuss with doctors in order to know what is their cardiovascular risk and what measures they could apply in order to improve it if necessary. Registries are a key feature of these ESC 2011 sessions and for the first time two new dedicated sessions have been incorporated into the scientific programme. During the first of these, AJ Kekar presented the first data from the Garfield Registry, aiming to measure real-life outcomes of 55,000 patients with newly diagnosed atrial fibrillation. The key message from uh, Garfield baseline characteristics of the first 10,000 patients are that uh, newly presenting patients with atrial fibrillation using contemporary risk scores, over 80% are at risk of thromboembolic stroke. Uh, that uh, we know how to identify these patients clearly. We know that only a small proportion of them, some 25%, have a concern about bleeding risk. 
Uh, and we know that the commonest risk factor, driving stroke risk, uh, is indeed hypertension. Brand new at the ESC 2011 is the ESC Studio, a television stage where interviews, discussions and demos are publicly filmed and broadcast. During one of these sessions, Ian Graham presented the latest version of Heart Score. Well, today we wish to tell you what's new about Heart Score, the ESC's electronic interactive system of predicting the risk of cardiovascular disease. A score is a way of assessing the impact of multiple risk factors on somebody's risk because usually in most people risk is the effect of three or four risk factors acting together. What's new about this version of it though is that we have put in information on HDL cholesterol which is protective uh, and also information to calculate what's called risk age. In addition we've made a really simple version where you only have to enter age, gender, smoking, height and weight to get an estimate of risk without any laboratory measures. The new HeartScore version is available to everyone at www.heartscore.org with access to the 15 national versions jointly developed with the National Cardiac Societies. A summary of the four new ESC guidelines was presented in Paris at a very crowded session. These 2011 ESC guidelines cover cardiovascular disease and pregnancy, peripheral artery disease management, acute coronary syndromes with non-ST elevation, and dyslipidemias. Victor Aboyans was the co-chair of the new guidelines on peripheral artery disease. Maybe the most important point is that um, patients with atherosclerotic disease should be uh, taken um, as a holistic approach, not only with re regarding the coronary artery disease or lower extremity disease or carotid disease, but overall the majority of these patients have a multi-site artery disease and they have to be taken and managed for all these sites altogether. The simple message is that patients who have peripheral artery disease are at the same level of risk of coronary artery disease and all the preventative um, management of patients for coronary artery disease also, sh also should be done for patients with PAD.